Antibodies are Y-shaped proteins that circulate around in the blood and their normal job is as a uh, it's an immune response against invading bugs like bacteria or viruses and those uh, the, the Y-shaped bit sticks on to the bug and allows the immune system to target it for destruction so it, it tells the immune system what's going wrong. Unfortunately in autoimmune diseases like autoimmune thyroid diseases antibodies get directed against tissues of your own body and they can either mark out uh, that your body's having an immune reaction to that tissue so they provide a signal that can be measured in the blood that that response is going on in your body or sometimes those antibodies can directly cause the autoimmune disease. In Graves disease uh, there are antibodies against the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor and by some quirk of nature those antibodies actually stimulate the thyroid gland to make uh, more thyroid hormones and they do that because there's some structural similarity between the shape of the normal thyroid stimulating hormone and those antibodies that target the receptor. So, the, so if you like, the thyroid is fooled into thinking it needs to make more thyroid hormone when in fact it's the antibodies uh, just have the same shape as the hormone. In Graves' disease, uh, the overactivity of the thyroid gland is directly caused by the antibodies that come in and stimulate the thyroid hormone stimulating receptor. And so if you're, if you're diagnosed of having thyroid overactive overactivity, the next test you should have is a test for those uh, thyroid stimulating antibodies, TSH receptor stimulating antibodies, because if those are in your blood it means you have Graves' disease and 80% of people with hypothyroidism that will be the cause. So it's a nice easy test to be ordered and it tells you immediately what the cause of the hypothyroidism is. So over the course of treatment of, of your Graves' disease, those antibodies will generally decline with antithyroid drug treatment. And uh, when the antibodies in the blood have disappeared, uh, your doctor can take that as a safe signal to stop the antithyroid drug treatment. And that there's a reasonable chance your thyroid will remain, uh, will remain controlled at that stage. So the antibodies in Graves' disease have a direct correlation to the uh, to how the disease is going uh, and the higher the antibodies in general the more aggressive or worse the disease is and if you have just low levels of those antibodies the easier it is that your disease will be able to be treated. Having thyroid antibodies uh, does not mean you have a low immune system in fact uh, rather to the contrary it means your immune system might be hyperactive um, we all evolved uh, in a world where the uh, two greatest threats to our lives were, or to our ancestors' lives, were starvation or uh, attack from infectious disease. And the obesity uh, epidemic we have is because we're all programmed to eat as much as we can, uh, and we're now living in a food rich, rich world. Uh, but also, autoimmune diseases, of course, but because our immune systems are very hyperactive and, and designed to allow us to survive uh, the Black Death and tuberculosis and all these infectious diseases that our grandparents and great-grandparents would have been exposed to uh, and we live in a very clean environment now so our immune systems don't know what to do with themselves. There are three clinically relevant uh, antibodies that might occur in thyroid disease. Uh, the most commonly used test is thyroid stimulating hormone receptor antibodies often known as TRABs and as those are the direct cause of Graves' disease they get measured in every patient with Graves' disease, hopefully, and they track very closely to the, cause of, to the course of the disease. So as the Graves' disease is improving, the antibodies are improving, and vice versa. If, if you've been had a period of remission and your Graves' disease is going to relapse, it's highly likely your antibody levels will, will um, rise at the same time as the disease is relapsing. Uh, and that's because those antibodies are directly causing the Graves' disease by stimulating the thyroid gland. About 10% of women over their lifetime will get thyroid peroxidase uh, antibodies in the blood and these mark out uh, the propensity or, or the tendency for the person to develop thyroid underactivity which is also known as Hashimoto thyroiditis. That develops very slowly. The antibodies mark out that the body is attacking the thyroid but they're probably not directly responsible for that attack. Uh, on average, people with uh, thyroid peroxidase antibodies have about a 50% chance of developing thyroid underactivity over 20 years of observation. So if you have thyroid peroxidase antibodies, it doesn't mean you'll definitely get thyroid underactivity. Many people don't, 
uh, but it's a marker you should have a blood test once a year to check on your TSH level because thyroid underactivity can develop very gradually, very insidiously, and, and sometimes people don't recognize the symptoms. So thyroproxidase antibodies mark out that you, that you have the tendency uh, to get thyroid underactivity. TSH stimulating antibodies, thyroid stimulating hormone receptor antibodies, uh, go along with Graves' disease and they map very closely to Graves' disease. So if your thyroid is overactive, those should be measured. Uh, thyroproxase antibodies uh, are, can also be present in Graves' disease, but are mainly used as a marker for thyroid underactivity, Hashimoto thyroiditis. So uh, if your thyroid has gone underactive, it's probably appropriate for you to have uh, thyroproxidase antibodies measured once. Uh, NICE recommends that we don't repeat the measurement because once you know they're positive, it has no other clinical value. And then thyroglobulin antibodies will be measured if you're unfortunate unfortunate enough to get thyroid cancer because uh, it uh, very much helps, uh, helps the clinician understand uh, what the thyroglobulin measurements in the blood mean because they can be inaccurate if you've got thyroglobulin antibodies in the blood. So for thyroproxidase antibodies you should probably just have one measurement in your life. If it's positive, it's positive and there's no clinical value to repeating the measurement. Uh, for thyroglobulin antibodies uh, every time you, you'll have thyroid cancer to have those measured and every time your clinician uh, orders a thyroglobulin test in the blood that will automatically have thyroglobulin antibodies measured at the same time uh, because um, you can't interpret the thyroglobulin levels without having the thyroglobulin antibody status known. Uh, and then the final thing is for Graves' disease, TSH receptor antibodies or TRABs uh, will be measured regularly uh, firstly for diagnosis when you're first found to be hypothyroidism uh, found to have hypothyroidism uh, and then uh, towards the end of treatment when your doctor is thinking whether you can stop your antithyroid drugs uh, then we wouldn't normally stop the antithyroid drugs without knowing that the, the TSH receptor antibodies are negative. For Graves' disease, if you've had successful treatment um, with antithyroid drugs, your uh, TSH receptor antibodies will uh, disappear towards the end of treatment, and that'll be an ind indicator for your doctor to stop your antithyroid drug treatment. Uh, for thyroid uh, peroxidase antibodies, they don't really correlate very well with the disease activity. They're just a marker that you have the disease, and there's no value to repeating the measurement. If you have normal thyroid function and positive thyroproxidase antibodies, you would have a 50% chance of developing thyroid underactivity, hypothyroidism, over the next 20 years or so. Uh, it's appropriate that you have your uh, blood TSH checked as a marker of uh, your thyroid status on average once a year or so over that period of time, mainly because the symptoms of thyroid underactivity can creep up on you and you can have often quite severe thyroid underactivity before some people realize that's what's going on. So that's why we'd recommend TSH screening if you've had a positive thyroproxase antibody measurement. If your thyroid function is normal, there's no reason to treat you with levothyroxine irrespective of your antibody status. It can feel frustrating, uh, but uh, we know half the people with positive thyroproxase antibodies will not develop thyroid disease over time. And in the context of pregnancy, which might be considered the most precious time, uh, we've uh, got really good evidence from randomized clinical trials that treating pregnant women who have positive antibodies, but no uh, abnormal thyroid function does not improve the outcome of the pregnancy.